So I know you all must be tired. <laughs> Long day, right? Uh, so let me start with a case study. First of all, I'm not a professor. Uh, I'm just an engineer. So uh, I'll try to show you what is the case that we would like to... How many doctors here, just in case? Okay, good. Engineers? Any engineers? Great. Any commerce people? Business? Fantastic. That's great. So there's a case. Uh, it's about a male, 35 years old, 22 kilometers from here. Uh, he's had multiple visits to hospital. He has seen an orthopedic surgeon. He has seen an oncology surgeon. He has seen a neurosurgeon. There are a lot of things he has seen. And uh, you can see the heart sound. You can hear? Right? So that was its uh, yesterday's heart sound. And uh, that's just two minutes before we got the heart sound. Is there a difference? Yeah, doctors? Right? There's something wrong, right? Yeah, so we could do that because uh, it's just my heart sound. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it's just that I'm being diagnosed that I'm healthy and excited. So just before coming on stage, uh, I was literally excited. And how we got to do this? How did we really get the heart sound of a person uh, recorded? Or how do we transmit it? And how, then, how can we all hear that? I'll come to that story. But let's go step by step. So I'll just end the sounds here. So I'm literally speaking from the bottom of my heart. And you could see that. So <laughs> right. So how many of us think we are creative? Anybody? Maybe? Okay, three, four hands, right? How many of us were born creative? Okay, so uh, you've seen that, right? Uh, so Michelangelo, he was a creative person. He's an artist who started with anatomies. We have Leonardo da Vinci, who was also an artist, but also an engineer. So the common thing between these two was creativity. So they were artists, but they were creative people. So even if uh, they were artists, they were still exploring different domains, different disciplines, and they were trying to come up with uh, different ideas. So Michelangelo actually dissected people, as in bodies, uh, to understand anatomy much better. And his drawings are still used in uh, anatomy classes, and there's a museum about it. Uh, Mike, as in not just Michelangelo, Leonardo Vinci. You can hear and you can see a lot of innovations that he has done. Uh, all the flights that he has designed, hydraulics, machines, and by qualification, by the way, he was an artist. So uh, he has a lot of uh, contributions in terms of engineering, and uh, although the background is still artist. So if you see, there is some common element, which is creativity, and uh, hardly I could see any hands up. But as kids, did you really create different games? Right? Did you play role plays, different games? Uh, did you imagine things? Did you have your own two-wheeler? Right? So that was creativity, right? So what happened? Where did that get killed? Something happened, right? We'll come to that. <laughs> but uh, we all are, say, Indian talent, right? We all know Jugaad, Indian talent. So we are all supposed to be creative. So yeah, that's beautiful. But uh, there's one problem here that we cannot always shave like that. We cannot always boil milk like that, nor can we always make a coffee like that. Uh, so the problem is that this is not scalable, this is not sustainable. So we do have talent, we all were creative somewhere down the line earlier, but somewhere up when we came to this stage, something happened, and uh, we are doing some creative work in meanwhile. However, it's not scalable. It's still like a bit of creativity, a bit of innovation, but still it's not really going all the way. Otherwise, we would have had amazing, great Indian products all over the world, right? So something is missing. Something is not there. Something is not correct. So we've been all talking about this great Indian divide of having doctors, engineers, and business, right? That question everybody of you have gone through. Have you? Right? So so kya banna hai? What do you want to become? A doctor, engineer, business? So if you really see the undergraduate, uh, these are just 2014-15, 3% are just doctors, MBBS graduates. 15% engineers, technology. And 15% in MBA business. Uh, so where are the people, other people? <laughs> right? 40% are into arts, humanities, and social sciences. Right? So that's, that's a good number. Just remember that there are so many creative people in India 
who are graduating. So we have around 1.5 million uh, engineers coming out every year. We have around 9 lakh doctors. Uh, but then one thought comes to my mind is that why are there not a lot of medical device innovations that are happening in our country? So just to give you numbers, what is wrong here is, if I can, yeah. So 80%, nearly 80% of our medical devices are imported. So you guys are aware of medical devices? Can we name a few of them? Any stethoscope? Yeah. Any, any more devices that you have seen, heard of? BP monitor, ECGs, right? So while that gets fixed, let me come to uh, my own personal journey. When it happened was uh, when the whole thing, whether you're an engineer, a doctor, and what has to be done in life, the great revolution came around third year of engineering. And uh, I realized that I didn't want to be a normal engineer. That was for sure. I knew that at some point of time, a third year engineering, I didn't want to be a normal engineer, do the normal nine to six job, go to a big industry, work on automobile, which was the sector then, or become a software engineer, even though I have been a mechanical engineer, get into IT. So I had realized by then, I don't know how, but there was a point where I realized that I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something different, that was for sure. I wanted to do something which is unpredictable, at least something which not everybody has done, something which is very innovative, something which is very creative. And at that point, I realized that I had to walk out of that line of what people are doing, of doing either a master's or going for a job or whatever is for the studies in that direction. So as a mechanical engineer, I took a detour and I did my master's in bioengineering. And then I ended up doing a PhD into medical device testing and evaluation. My mother still asks me, okay, so what do you do? You're an engineer, you go to hospitals, you talk to doctors, you attend surgeries. And what exactly is happening? So I tried to tell her I'm doing okay, nothing bad. So, uh, but then uh, it's still a dilemma. Then how do you explain people? Even a lot of, say, when you get married and then people ask, so what does the guy do? So it's still difficult to explain them what exactly. So I do have a doctor's degree in, in front of my name, but he's not a medical doctor. He's an engineer, so why does he go to hospitals then? There's a big confusion there, but uh, I had to do that. And the reason is, this is the number. So if you see, 80% of our medical devices are imported. So all of us who are taxpayers, we are actually paying for imported devices. And that is the reason why the healthcare cost is increasing. So what we're trying to do here, we have a small team and we're trying to see, can we do something here? Can we have some innovative medical devices in the country? And I'm just going to share with you three different stories, three small stories which we have collected throughout this, what we have come across. And uh, if that is something I can share, let me try. So if you really see, Stethoscope, right? Everybody knows how it originated. That's 200 years back. Somebody trying to put ear uh, using a scope and try to hear the heart or lung sounds. Okay, what has changed in that? Just two ear pieces, there's a tube. Now it becomes a plastic and you still put the chest piece. So I don't know how, why people have not questioned this. I was surprised that stethoscope by every average doctor used is still almost the same design which has been there for a long time. So then it really came down that, so maybe there is no need for innovating something. There was no need for having a better stethoscope. There was no need for coming out and say that, let's have something better than what we have today. But then that was not true. So uh, when we spoke to doctors, try to understand, uh, a good incident happened was, uh, so Dr. Nambiraj here, so the left person, he actually works in a rural hospital and he says that I have to take a lot of pain to really screen and scan people who have different uh, heart sounds and lung sounds. And all these people have to either go to a metro city to see a specialist who's a cardiologist or a pulmonologist. And then if the pulmonologist says that, oh, it's okay, it's just a normal problem, all the way the guy has to come back. So if you see there was a problem that we have less number of doctors, the 3%, and there's a huge population. So the doctor to patient ratio is very low. So here the idea was, 
can instead of the patient the heart sound or the information of the patient travel to the doctor who's an expert and then say out of the 10 only these two need to come so that is how we actually came up so these engineers who came up with the digital stethoscope what you can hear is actually a heart sound which is much better than what you can hear uh, with a normal scope it is amplified it is filtered you can have your bluetooth connectivity it can be transferred to your mobile it can be transferred to internet but that's the beauty of getting engineers and doctors together imagine what they could do here that was amazing and now we didn't stop there so the middle guy he's taking a role of an entrepreneur now say it's beautiful to have a great device working and showing that, okay, you take any stethoscope, connect the device, it becomes digital. But the problem is, how does it reach all of you? Somebody has to start a business, somebody has to manufacture it, somebody has to package it, somebody has to sell it, somebody has to collect the check from you guys, right? So <laughs> finally, there is one guy, there's an engineer who is now saying that I want to become an entrepreneur. It's a beautiful story, doctor, engineer, and entrepreneur coming together, a medical device coming along. Rural population, uh, all your doctors can have heart sounds, murmurs, everything recorded, you can show to your seniors. Anything that has been recorded earlier day can be transmitted to you, not in a situation where the doctor, the tutor or the mentor is trying to make you hear a sound which only he hears and you are hearing something else and you think that what you have heard is what he is trying to tell you. So there's a confusion there and we're trying to reduce that also. But that's a beautiful story of how do we innovate and come up with a medical device, a digital, simple digital stethoscope for diagnosis. The second story that I'll move on is, uh, you see this, uh, the first image, the top left. So that is how suturing used to be done, right? You have a cart, they used to put ants, break the heads and legs, and the ant used to hold on. But that was barbaric, as in that was like ancient. And then you have lots of ants along the suture keep holding on that position. Uh, would we have still loved to do suturing like that? <laughs> right, definitely no. So in meanwhile, something happened. Some doctor said that I wish there was a device or something, a needle, a suture. Something came up, some engineers spoke to each other, doctors came across and needles and sutures came along, right? So there was a, some innovation progression which happened and suturing came into picture. But then now as we are moving with technology, we moved on to laparoscopic surgery, which is keyhole surgeries instead of a big incision. Now you have just three holes, you put a camera inside and then your long instruments go inside and you try to do the job, which first of all reduces the incision size and the infection. But then the problem which comes with minimal invasion is that you've already lost your wrist. You have long instruments, you're trying to operate. So that's what the problem with a doctor, Indian doctor is. Now, that problem is not there anywhere else. Usually it's not seen because outside India, people do one or two surgeries maximum. In India, we do a lot of surgeries in a day, right? They're just sequenced. The doctor is supposed to work because the patient ratio, you have to work. Now imagine the doctor trying to do all the kind of gimmicks that are supposed to be done for suturing. And you're trying to suture which is a wall, abdominal wall, which is on the top side. The whole instrument has to be like this, it goes in a wrong way. So what happened, again, a brilliant doctor, uh, Dr. Suresh Deshpande from Kolhapur, uh, who couldn't decide to be engineer or a doctor when he was in 12th, a very senior uh, doctor who was head of the laparoscopic society, he actually said that I really need to solve this problem because it, I'm tired of training people of how to do correct suturing and the current devices are having problem. So he came to us and uh, Dr. Uh, Suresh Deshpande explained the problem. So there's a young engineer who's there on the right corner and he took it as a challenge. And then he came up with different mechanisms to solve the problem. And I'll try and see if I can see the video is working here. Um, yeah. So maybe that's pause. But what we came up was a device, instead of the long ends which are grasping, we actually gave a multi-degree of freedom to that. So the whole device had a wrist inside the patient's body. So it could do multiple degrees of freedom and it can rotate. The third story that I would like to share here is, uh, that's the first, uh, one of the first sockets which was given to amputees. So once you have an amputation, either uh, prosthesis is given, prosthesis is just a functional leg that is given to support and maybe you can walk. So you must have seen pirates, right? 
they have that wooden log, the stake, which is just put on and they keep on walking. Uh, we were surprised to realize that the leg, which is still used by most of the amputees in India, is still very much similar where you have a socket which fits to the patient and there is almost a hinge joint and that's it, a Jaipur foot, which was a brilliant innovation. But once the patient comes to Mumbai to get this leg, say Mahalakshmi, there's a center where you can get such a leg, the amputee comes to that, then he has to wait almost eight hours because plaster of Paris is put, the socket is, the mold is made, then again that is to be poured in plaster of Paris, the negative is made, then again a HDP pipe is warmed, you put on it, then it is filed, finished, and all this process takes almost eight hours. Now if the amputee or the patient has come early morning, he can walk back the same day. In case he comes at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, he has to wait all the way overnight to get his leg the next day. Now what is the average cost for <laughs> Staying overnight in Mumbai, so that's that's huge, right? And if you're coming with your uh, families and support and you're actually losing your daily wage, there's a huge cost. So what we tried here, there's again, uh, there's a beautiful team which came up and the team had uh, a doctor, you can see, yeah? There's a doctor physiotherapist on the left hand side, there's an engineer on the right hand side and uh, this all worked out. They tried to see if the time can be reduced to make the same socket. So instead of actually making a plaster of Paris mold, what they did was they took some photos. Now if you take photos, instead of the patient traveling from that uh, long part or the rural area, only the data or the information travels, it goes to cloud and it, a 3D model of the patient can be made here. The socket can be made and transmitted. We even realized further that uh, there's even bigger problem with all geo and 3G and everything. Uh, it's still difficult to upload images from a rural area. So the engineers again, as in the right hand side guy, he said, no, I cannot have that much data transmitted. So he even worked further and uh, he came down to a parametric model or a equation where you just take few measurements of the patient, you SMS them and a 3D model of the patient is created here. And that can be 3D printed. And uh, if you can just see if that video can be played. Yes. So if you see the leg over there at the bottom side, it is a 3D printed, one of the first 3D printed sockets which was fitting to the patient. The patient is from Daman. He's a volunteer who has said that I would like to try this out. He's an electrician and uh, he walked there. So I wish we could see the video, but maybe we'll do it later on. But it was really happy, as in we could see the satisfaction when the patient could walk with his own leg on a different ground. And there was a knee which was fitted to him, which was developed in IIT Madras. So the whole time for this now has been reduced to few hours. So the patient doesn't matter what time he comes, he still gets it. And plaster of Paris has been eliminated, which is not environment friendly. So we're trying to give the whole leg. We are not trying to do here any kinds of myo controlled and uh, electronically controlled leg and which knows its gait and pattern. We are not doing that high end work here. The problem was uh, we have visited patients who said that, okay, I do have the high end leg. It's just that it is very difficult to operate in dharavi humidity and dust. This electronics doesn't work there. So can you have some kind of a maintenance shop? Where do I go if this doesn't work every day? So they said, give us something very simple something which we can even fix at our own end. So that's where we try to reduce on the effort that was required for that. And uh, these were just simple stories, three different stories, but like this, we've come up with different medical devices, working with a lot of doctors and engineers put together, and we came up, in case you miss something, this is the slide you can have a look. So we came up with a different process of developing innovative medical devices. And that prop process can be divided into four Ds, define, develop, deliver, and deploy. And each stage has a part where you can have team building, where doctors and engineers understand, do clinical immersion, doctors uh, come to our engineering labs, we go to their uh, operation theaters, try to understand the problem, define it very well. A well-defined problem is half done. And then we deliver, uh, before that, we develop the solution, by actually making engineering CAD models and manufacturing the prototypes. And then we deliver it by testing it 
rigorous testing to say that this is going to be a very good device which can be used by the patient or the doctor and then deploying, finding a way so that it reaches the people it was designed for. Just having ideas is not enough. So how does it really reach the people it was designed for? So that also we come across. So, so far we have worked on 300 problems, developed some 150 prototypes, uh, filed about 25 billion. There's some 12 devices which are coming out successful in last two and a half years. So we're trying our bit, we're trying our bit, but uh, that's not bad, two and a half years and 12 devices is okay. So I'll just come to one part, my learnings or what we as a group have learned while doing medical device innovation. First is that, uh, be curious. As, in, as doctors, my only urge to you guys is that question whatever you're seeing. As in, there can always, always be a different way of doing things. So be curious, ask why. So you could be the guys who could develop the next generation of medical devices by trying to understand the procedures what are being used currently. Question them. Then the second part is that try and see if the problem is good enough. What is the need for the problem? Is there a good impact? Do you really want to make a health impact, a social impact? Try to see that. Then you can see the most important part of the whole thing that I'm trying to say is collaborate. Doctors and engineers have to leave their ivory towers and try to come together and work together. When was the last time an engineer saw a doctor? Any engineers, right? Yeah. So when was the last time you saw your doctor? Only when we were not well. And doctors, when did you meet your engineering friends? Right, so we, we have a very secluded uh, domains in which we are trying to sit. But I think there is a lot which can happen if we travel those barriers. These are mental blocks. All we need to do is talk to each other and say, hey, I wish there is something like this which could really help me in my surgery or if that could help the patient much better. Can there be some technology which can do like that? It's just all about identifying the problems and working together. But yes, we have to move, move out of our domains, comfort zones. Not just that, we have tried that. Uh, a lot of creativity is there. Uh, we as born Indians or as born uh, intellectuals, we can actually come up with different ways of solving the same problem. And we can engineer the solutions. And uh, not all, just having an idea or a prototype or a solution is not enough. We have to go all the way. Make sure that the users that it was designed for get it. So if we have to become entrepreneurs, let's be entrepreneurs. If we are supposed to have NGOs through which this is manufactured, let's do that. If there is an Indian manufacturing company, if that can be empowered by giving a novel solution, let's do that. So in all, I'd like to conclude saying that uh, there are only two major things. So when you see this happiness of having medical devices being used by various patients uh, in last few years, so I am glad that I took that detour. Uh, I'm glad that I walked away from what everybody was trying to do. Uh, so there are only two key messages if I can, if I can share my learnings is that leave it better than what you found and uh, ask for help and try to help. Thank you very much.